Hi friends. I hope you have loved the board game that we have made in the last episode. If you have any queries about it, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to solve them. If you wish to upload some photos playing the board game, please do so on Facebook and tag us that is Ayuka Saipop. Now let's get back to today's story. So today's story is about someone who is known as the master of many inventions. Once upon a time, a boy was squatting absolutely motionless in an empty barn. Where are you? His mother spent a lot of time, almost half the morning, looking for the boy. Once she found and approached him and asked, What are you doing now? Mom, I'm sitting and brooding an egg. They say, if you warm it this way, a chick hatches. The mother was exhausted looking for the boy, but she was also glad about the boy's way of thinking. This boy, with the knack of actually trying out everything he heard, was none other than the great inventor, Thomas Alva Edison. Edison was very weak when he was a young boy and his family was concerned of his health. But they all were happy about his non-ending curiosity level. Edison started school one year later than other children of his age because of his health. But still his curiosity wasn't affected. He always asked a lot of questions in the class and so many that the teacher could not teach. So the teachers said that he was a troublesome boy and stubborn too. Looks like you have no hope at all. You don't have to come to school, they said. They called Edison's mother to the class and removed him from school. So Edison's mother began to teach him at home. Instead of school education, she read him literature and many other books. Mom, I like listening to the stories you read to me better than going to the school, he said. Edison also ended up growing interested in science because of this. As years passed by, Edison's enthusiasm about experiments increased. But all results were not good. One day he was thinking why people can't fly like balloons do. Thinking of this, he gave some effervescent powder to his friend and told him if you eat this powder you can fly. Of course, the friend had to be taken to the hospital because of stomach ache and Edison was beaten up by his parents. In order to conduct more experiments, he made money by selling newspapers on trains. And he even set up his laboratory in a running train. Can you imagine a laboratory filled with chemicals in a train? One day, a chemical for experiment dropped when the train shook greatly, causing a fire. You do any experiments again, I'll kick you out, said the station master angrily after rushing and putting out the fire. What shall I do now? I can't do any experiments on train. Edison was discouraged. But one day, he saved the station master's son for being hit by a train. And so, the station master gave Edison a small room to do his experiments. Afterwards, Edison learned time graph skills with the help of the station master. Although Edison became a telegraphic operator after that, he couldn't resist his desire to do experiments. So one day, he got on board for New York with a dream about being an inventor just as at the age of 20 years old. But invention was not easy. To start with, he visited many places carrying the cell vote recorder that he had invented for the first time, but no one even acknowledged it. One day, a gold and stock price telegraph company made a request to Edison. Edison, since you have good hand skills, will you please make a good price indicator since ours is broken? 
Edison sensed the urgency and made the machine in just three days. Being very satisfied and happy, the company president gave him a job of $3,000 in those days. Edison used this money to set up a factory in New York and began to make stock price indicator. This business was prosperous and he earned a lot of money. Now I can work for my inventions as I thought, he said. Edison worked like an ant for 18 hours a day for inventions. Edison was working on a machine that would produce human voice. The people laughed at Edison's remark and said he was foolish. But Edison really invented a phonograph and produced human voice some time later. All the people were greatly surprised. His inventions did not stop there. They still continued. Once he thought, big factories and buildings used electric bulbs, but households used gas lamps at those times. How can I make it possible to use light bulbs at a household he thought using electric power. Edison carried out a lot of research on it. He changed different materials and examined around thousand times till he found tungsten. And that was the first incandescent bulb invented. Edison ended his life at just the age of 34 in 1931 after inventing plenty of things that could make life easier for people. Intelligence is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration, he used to say. What is perspiration? Perspiration is working hard till we sweat. Working hard and not giving up is what we can learn from this story today, is what I feel. I hope you've loved the story and now let's make a toy. So as Edison's most famous invention is the incandescent bulb, I thought let's try to glow a bulb, not actually a bulb, but an LED bulb, a small LED bulb lamp at home with whatever we can have at home. I think most of you can find this material at home, but if you cannot, you can go to the shop afterwards, after this lockdown and stuff is over and you can buy it. It is very cheap and you can also make the toy. Let's start. So we need two lemons cut in half. You can also use whole lemons, but I think this is more appropriate as we don't uh, waste much lemons. So this is also workable. Use two lemons cut in half. We need four copper, bare copper wires. Bare is that it should not have any insulation on them. Then four zinc wires. As I did not have zinc wires at home, I have used galvanized wires. That is iron wires coated with zinc and an LED bulb. That's it. Let's start. So now I have connected as you can see each copper wire to a zinc wire and each lemon contains one copper wire and one zinc wire that is galvanized wire in this case. Again a copper wire, a galvanized wire and a copper wire and a galvanized wire. Each lemon should have has one copper wire and one zinc or galvanized wire. These wires should not be connected or should not touch each other outside or even in the lemon. They should be apart from each other and make sure both the wires are there situated in one of the lemons. In the last 
section one galvanized wire and one copper wire is remaining and i have connected the led bulb to the galvanized wire on this side and i will touch this to the copper wire let's see if our bulb glows glowing now i'll tell you how does it happen so every zinc wire in the lemon comes in contact with the citric acid or the acid in the lemon and it loses it its electron it is the tendency of the zinc to lose its electron and the tendency of copper to accept the electrons when the zinc wire loses the electrons these electrons travel through the lemon the acid and go to the copper wire and hence the complete circuit we can see the com circuit completed through the lemons and hence the light bulb glows so in this in this toy we can see that the electron flow is completed the zinc wire losing the electrons traveling through the lemon the copper wire is gaining the electrons and again to the next lemon or the next wire and hence the circuit of the electricity is getting completed to give us the glow of the led lamp this voltage is very less actually if we try to do it with big lemons and more number of lemons in series we can probably glow a bigger voltage lamp you can also try that at home i hope you love the story and the toy let's meet up next time